Hey everybody, well, uh, happy Monday and welcome to the Note Closure Show. We are, uh, it is episode 65. Uh, it is Monday, 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 March 6th. Uh, it's hard to believe that, uh, man, we're only 45 days out for Note Camp. 45 days from Note Camp 3.0. Really excited. Uh, over 135 people have already signed up for it. We expect to be at 500 because everybody waits till the last two weeks to get signed up. Um, we are just over a, mo a month and a day from the next Note Mastermind, which I'm really excited about. Uh, got some really cool things lined up for my peeps coming in town. Um, just jacked up. We're going to be here in Austin. We got just some... I can't share it because it's just going to... I don't want to break the thunder. Just, it's so much. It is so good. It's so good. On uh, what we're working on to really uh, to make this Mastermind... I won't say better, because every time we do a Mastermind event, it's so unique. Um, although we did really top the cake in December with the Mastermind in Orlando at Disney World Resort. Uh, but this time around, it'll probably be a little bit smaller, probably expecting 50, 60, instead of the 80 that we had last time. And uh, But we got some really cool things we're rolling out. A little bit longer sessions with people, uh, which is good. Um, but it's literally 31 days out, guys. We have our... Uh, Final fast track before that one, March 23rd, 24th, and uh, or 25th. Hang on, what's the calendar set there? That's 16th. Oh, that's 16. Sorry, <laughs> I need to take that calendar down. Uh, fast track 24th, 25th, and 24th, 25th, 26th. So we got three spots left in the fast track. Uh, so really three spots for you to come in and hang out and spend three days with us prior to the mastermind. So you're up and running April 7th, 8th, and 9th here in Austin, Texas. So excited about that, everybody. Uh, Note Camp was again 45 days out. All sorts of great stuff we're rolling out for that. You see a lot of marketing if you haven't seen stuff already. We're just getting in, just getting grooving right now mm -hmm. with uh, some of the fun infographics and, and marketing that we're getting ready to roll out. Uh, really excited some of the, the new speakers come on for Note Camp uh, 3.0. Um, we'll be sending some more notifications out regarding that here over the next couple weeks or two. But this week, one of the things that uh, I get really excited about every year is going to San Diego for the Traffic and Conversion Convention. Um, one of the great events, uh, the guys at Digital Marker, Ryan Dice, Perry Belcher, Roland Frazier, do an amazing job with this event. Uh, and Deanna Rogers, absolutely, who coordinates everything and works with vendors and stuff, just does a, a bang up job. Over 5,000 people attending. Deanna was my first ever assistant back in the day. And it's nice seeing people do amazing things when they leave and stop working with it. So she's just done amazing thing. One of my adoptive moms, I guess you could say, out there. But I'm looking forward to seeing her. And more importantly, getting some amazing marketing ideas and nuggets to bring back here to help me take my business to a whole new level. And that's really, every year I go, it's a pricey ticket, but it's so well worth it. I mean, not only networking with a bunch of uh, other internet and info marketers, but just coming back with great ideas that I can implement immediately to take our business to whole new levels. Every time I've gone, I've gotten something just amazing. So this will be the fourth, third or fourth year we go straight in a row. And after I went the first, I'm like, oh, we have to go do this every year because it's so important. Now, also this week kicks off uh, South by Southwest week here in, in Austin. This next week, which I'm glad I'll be out of town for the craziness of that. Um, but whenever you go to an event, you should walk out with three nuggets. Uh, at least three nuggets. Yeah, you probably have more than that, but what will you be able to implement within a 72 to 96 hour period? Not much. Um, especially when you get back to work, you lose a day of travel. There's really three things that you should strive for every time you go someplace. So um, I thought I, I would, we would focus, based on your guys' suggestion today, to focus on some of the top worst advice that we've ever been given. Mm -hmm. All right? And this is worst advice that I see, or horrible advice that I see, still being taught today from gurus and entrepreneurs and things. Uh, yeah, exactly. Gurus, which is a four-letter word for something else. But anyway, we won't name, we won't name that. But I, I was, before I get into that, I was really surprised. I know there were quite a few people that went out to the Note Investor Summit in San Diego or Southern California this weekend. And I was looking online. There was no social media presence. No, I, I, the only social media presence was from like John Nelson, oh, Wayne it. Snell, some of our peeps yeah. who do an amazing job not only closing deals but also marketing. But there was nothing from that event. So if you did go to NIS, I would love to know what you what you learned there. Uh, I guess they had a pretty good turnout, 200 plus, 300 plus on Friday, Saturday. 
and 200 on Sunday, which dwindles down. That's normal. But I always like to know, hey, you know, should we have gone? Should we go hang out? I know we're planning on going probably to the Note Expo in Dallas later this year. Uh, but we've always tried to take back and kind of reel in the amount of events that we go to. We're not doing any of the thing Realty Expos this year um, because the fact is we just think we can do a better job with marketing here and, and driving traffic, which has totally turned out to be the case so far for the year based on the number of opt-ins and things that we've been doing with smart marketing uh, to make things better. But let's uh, let's get into the, the worst advice I've ever been given in the note business, everybody. Is that okay, everyone? Mm -hmm. yeah. um, So the worst advice ever was somebody told me that I should foreclose on everything. And I leave this, as the, I start this off the first one, because that was what my intention when I first got into note business was to foreclose on every asset, okay? Oh, I'm not gonna try to modify, don't let it modify those deadbeats as people have plenty of opportunities, yada, yada. That was the worst advice ever. I left so much money on the table and I had to fork out money for attorney fees, foreclosure costs. So if you're looking at the note business as an opportunity for you, don't get so stuck into one exit strategy that it pigeonholes you. That's really the advice behind the advice. The story behind the story, the, okay, is don't get stuck with just one exit strategy. You wanna be flexible and make things happen. If you focus on one exit strategy, you're ultimately gonna get burned or miss out on deals because you're so st stuck in a rut, okay? The uh, number six exit strategy, real fast here. No, that was number seven. Oh, that was you, number oh, you're seven. Doing, you're doing seven. Okay. Doing seven, Sorry, yes. It's all right. <laughs> uh, number six is trust me. Never trust a hedge fund or a seller. All right. Trust me, it's there. It always trust but verify. I think it should be one word out there. Anytime anybody says, hey, trust me on this, uh, unless it's from a very credible source, if somebody tells me that right off the bat, I don't trust them. Okay. Uh, we don't want to deal with it, with people that say, trust me, because they will usually not have the collateral or the thing that's involved with it uh, to get things rock and roll. All right, number five. I don't recommend this, but I've had people, plenty of people say, oh, just use Zillow for values. <laughs> yeah, that's not a good, that's like, the, should be the worst advice ever. Uh, just use Zillow comps. You have to realize that Zillow is gonna be based off of most, most of the time, high-end sales. You'll have some BPO or REOs and some of the rehabs in there, but it's at all not a clear thing to look at and trust values. It's a rough idea, a, a guesstimate, I guess you could say. It's, well, it's better than a guesstimate because you got some sold, but you always need to have a realtor pull a CMA for you, okay? Comparative market analysis, all right? Um, <laughs> number four. You don't need a market. <laughs> You don't need a market for deals. Oh, I don't need a market. I don't, you don't need to use Facebook. You don't need to use LinkedIn. I see this, I hate to say this, from some more of the gray hairs in the business because they don't market. And so they want to spread the word, but most of the time they realize they need to be marketing. Everybody is marketing in some sort of fashion. They just do it differently. All right? And in today's economy, today's society, your social media marketing is going to be the biggest bang for your buck. It's also be the cheapest bang for the buck to get things out. You look at what like Cody Cox has done with a, a, a post that got almost a thousand views. McMurtry and McMurtry getting a hundred views off of me reposting it. Just feeding people market and do things. They drive more business. They raise more capital. You cannot market, but you're going to have a whole lot harder time being in anything long term. I have a question. Yes, ma'am. Um, is it because they don't know how to market or is it because they don't want to? Which one do you think it is? I think it's a bit of both, Nicole. Um, one, they don't take the time to learn a platform. I'll give you one platform that I struggle with is Snapchat. I need to spend a little more time on Snapchat, which I'm like, what? But I could do more Snapchat stories. But that's one thing that we'll be featuring in the 100 books or the 100 notes is more of a Snapchat stories. But um, a lot, what I find is most people had hit an age and the technology is... They spend more time doing other things, and they don't see the value in it. Now, it's not always an age group thing, and sometimes it's people that have a little bit more of their own private capital. Like, oh, I don't need to market, I got my own money. Well, at some point, they end up either using all that all, all that money up, or it gets delegated out, or gets pulled from them, and now they're sitting there, well, I need to market, but now I don't know how to. 
Now the silver spoon that they were given is actually choking them versus spending the time to learn something. Does that make sense? Yeah. You know, everybody, I mean, there's all sorts of new technologies that happen all the time. You just have to take the time and have the learning curve to learn how to use something. Does that make sense, everybody? Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, but yeah, everybody, if there's people all the time, oh, yo, I don't need a market. I'm good. I don't forget that whole rising other capital. No, at some point, you're going to need to use other people's money. Okay. Um, number three. See that binder? Number three is, oh, you can use direct mail to market. Now, there's some people out there that will sell training courses. This is not a training course. This is just uh, a binder. A binder. <laughs> but I see people that have training courses that are like yay thick in binders. And I'm like, what are they selling? And it's like, oh, we're going to mail direct mail pieces out to the county clerk's office or the county recorder's office trying to find those and other direct mail pieces. Look, no offense, that's the old way of doing business. And if you're buying a training package based on how much it weighs, uh, you're in some serious problems because most of the time, if you're not doing something digital, something online these days, uh, the person who's training you it probably hasn't closed a regular deal in a long time. Okay, I see this happen all the time. People buy courses and it just goes on a, a shelf. Uh, you don't see a lot of training courses here. You see, I've got a, like a, a box full of some more stuff, but I don't like sending that stuff out because it doesn't get utilized. I just me log in online and use the stuff online. It makes sense. But people sending out direct mail pieces to find notes, it's a big waste of time, a waste of money, and a waste of good energy that we put to something else. Okay? Um, oh, you're going to love this. Number two. Number two is, I only want to buy my own backyard. Mm -hmm. All right. If you have that mentality, notes are not for you. No offense, straight up, don't waste your time, go do something else. Now, the only small exceptions could be if you were in Florida, Indiana, Ohio, Michigan. Um, people call me all the time, I want to buy New York, New Jersey notes. No, you don't want to buy New York, New Jersey notes. It's a two-year, three-year foreclosure process. Anybody that says that to me, or anybody that says, I just want to buy my own backyard, it's not worth wasting the time. Because what happens with that? They're too much of a control freak. They're like, I gotta go out and touch it and feel it and see it. Oh, I have to be able to hold it and rub it and touch it and love it. Okay? Uh, not a smart thing. With notes, you buy in multiple markets. That's how you find deals. As real estate investors, we're all targeting one thing, ROI. And if the numbers make sense, depending on what your exit strategies are, preferred exit strategies. You know, I said earlier, I only don't focus on one, but if your exit strategies, your two, three, maybe even four ones that you focus on all work, hey, the deal makes sense. Who cares if it's in Timbuktu or Oviedo, Florida, or Warren, Michigan, all right, or St. Louis, Missouri. If the deal makes sense, run with it. If it's a good deal and it can cash flow and make sense, there are plenty of resources online uh, plenty of resources to reach out to to be able to help you in your business expand beside your own backyard. I see this happen a lot of times, and, and I hate to say this because there's a lot of our students that are in California, but a lot of California people like, oh, I want to buy notes in California. That's great. Go do something else. We're not going to waste our time. All right. Um, I only want to buy in Arizona. I want to buy Nevada. That's great. Go do something else. No offense. We're not going to waste our time by just chasing down notes for those. If I do see any of those areas, I'm going to buy them for myself. Okay. <laughs> So don't be a, uh, a zip code junkie, all right? Focus on making things happen. You'll be a whole lot happier, okay? Now, the number one, worst advice ever is you don't need a servicer. I have literally seen a guy who's been teaching real estate for close to 20 years say that from the front of the stage on some commercial loans. Actually, at a noteworthy event a few years back. And I'm like, that guy should not be teaching. He should not be allowed on stage. Yes, there are some states that you don't need to have a servicing company. You could self-collect if you want to. But you run the risk of doing stuff that's way below your pay grade. And it's not worth your time. Um, if I find people that tell me they don't have a loan servicer, we don't sell them notes. It's things that it's not worth the time doing. Okay? Don't be one of those idiots that is going to cut a corner try to step is going to step over dollars to save nickels. If you do that, you're going to have a serious problem at some point. Maybe not right now, but at some point you will. 
And so those are the seven biggest mistakes that I've heard <laughs> people give as far as advice out there. Anybody have any questions, comments right now? So Nicole? Stephanie has some, bad, I guess, some advice that she's received. Don't search for or solely look at vacants and occupied properties based on other investment investors' approach. It depends on where you're investing. You can leave great, great assets on the table doing that. <laughs> Stephanie who? Oh, Stephanie Stephanie Goodman. Goodman. She's giving advice. That's a great advice. Good advice, Steph. That's right. Um, Brett Berkey asks, is there an effective and ineffective way to market? Uh, Yeah, ineffective way is sending out mailers and flyers to uh, banks and to stress stuff like you would if it was a a, a REO or foreclosure. Effective marketing, it all depends on what you're marketing for. You have to think about your message, your audience, where your audience is at and going from there. Yeah, you need to know your demographics. You need to know what your avatar, your makeup of the client that you're looking for. And actually doing it. The most effective marketing is uh, marketing. Amen to that, Jen, <laughs> is actually getting off your butt and actually doing something. If you're doing something, you're going to be beating a lot of people that are just sitting around with their thumb up their butt, not doing anything. Okay, what else? Uh, that, oh, another one, don't bombard your audience either. That's from Stephanie as well. Yeah, don't bombard your audience with the same old message. You want to definitely change your message up. If you do email on a daily basis, change it up a little bit. Tweak it up, get people uh, excited about what you're doing, and give them titles, something that's gonna make them click on email versus just giving them like buy my stuff, buy my stuff. Okay? Uh, tonight, it is Monday. We do have the Monday note tonight. Uh, here's a story about a note deal in uh, who knows? Anyway, it's called the note story. We have 11 notes that we're selling. These are firstly not performing, they're a little higher end, nicer looking assets. All right? Um, we have Joel Markovitz going to spend be on the call with us tonight as we're going to break down these 11 assets. Joel's actually selling these on behalf of JH's and JH's portfolio, along with knowing the servicing and where they are on the deal. So you're going to actually hear direct from the horse's mouth tonight on the deal flow. So if you've signed up for the Note Funding League, we will send you the list here in a little bit. One thing, if you're signed up for the Note Funding League, don't ever, don't ever let me catch you emailing that out and blasting it to other people's lists. Uh, we had two people respond regarding the same person sending this list out and blasting it out across the board. And when I talked to the guy, the guy wanted to give me lip. Well, what do you mean? I haven't signed an NDA. No, you didn't. And still, if I'm going to send a list out, it's for you to buy. Not for you to broker. Not for you to do any of that horse shit. Okay? It's to literally buy for your own portfolio. If you're not a note buyer, then don't waste your time doing anything. Okay? If I ever find you sending the list out, you will be blacklisted, no questions asked. All right, I take this very, very seriously. We're providing deals to you. If that's the case, we will nip it in the butt and you won't be ever be able to see a list again. All right? It's important to keep that in mind, everybody, that when we get these lists in, we don't want them blasted out across the board. We want you to, we send it to you as an opportunity to make an offer. If you're not gonna make an offer, it doesn't mean send it out to your database. That stuff doesn't fly, okay? So tonight at 7 o'clock, we'll probably have 200, 300 people on. We're excited. Over 140 people already RSVP'd, which is a little bit higher than we usually see come first thing Monday morning. And uh, so get rock and rolling. So join us at 7 o'clock tonight. We'll post a link if you haven't done it already. Are we doing the deposit on these right now? Um, yes, we'll do the deposit. Everything going forward, we're doing a deposit. Okay. Unless they bought a note from us before. Okay. okay. So if you're brand new, you're going to have to secure. If you're the accepted offer, you have to put at least a, a deposit down of some sort. 500 bucks. To secure your winning bid, but tonight we'll be breaking it down, making some, uh, going through some deals, talking about exit strategies, and um, talking about where they are servicing wise. These are a little bit higher assets, but higher valued assets. The price is a little bit higher, but I still think there's a lot of opportunities to make some great ROI for your portfolio. Um, it is also Jen's birthday today. Yay! Happy birthday to Jen! Thank you. Yes. <laughs> Good stuff. Uh, that, anybody else have any questions, comments from this weekend? Another one from Stephanie. She said, but on a good side, and I quote, send the damn email. <laughs> okay, so <laughs> <laughs> that's twice it's popped up. So uh, what Stephanie is referring to is a couple years ago when I would go out and coach with people, I would literally go out and spend four days with them one-on-one in their market, at their house, their office, uh, wherever it was, and we would just work on their note business. It's pretty intense uh, spending four days with me. Think about all the stuff that I'm kicking butt. If I'm focused just on your stuff, I'm gonna be driving you to get stuff done. So we were actually in Carlsbad Cavern working with Aaliyah Ott and Terry Garner from the girls in Investors in Action. Um, 
and we were working on it at her first email blast at their database. And those ladies have come a long way. I'm very, very proud of what they've done and what they've accomplished and they're speaking and teaching people now. They're spending a lot of time on uh, some commercial deals and sell storage facilities. What's funny is I remember sitting there getting when we wrote the email up and they're wanting to double check it. Like, I need to send in somebody to proof for you. It's like, no, send the damn email, send the damn email, send the damn email, send it. Get it done. It may not be perfect, but get it out to their database. And sure enough, they hit send. They were all shaking. And sure enough, it might be the fastest time. In less than like five minutes, uh, Aaliyah's phone rang twice with people that read their email and they're like, oh my God, this does work. I'm like, yes, it does work. I don't lie. Uh, to do it. And what was funny is I see Aliyah had a marketing email come across my desk the other day and I sent her an email. I said, good to see that you send the damn email. <laughs> and she responded back laughing saying, yes, I actually told that story from the front of the stage the other day about marketing. You have to market and you're going to goof up. All right. You're not going to be perfect. You just have to get the message out to your database. You're going to, you're going to get better at time. If you keep trying to be perfect, you'll be perfect at not getting anything done. And the only thing that you guarantee by not trying is failure, everybody. So it's Monday. I know some people feel like they have the Mondays. It's kind of dreary, maybe a little tired from a busy weekend, maybe a little, oh, I need a, I need a vacation from my vacation. <clears throat> Go make something happen, send something out, find a blog, find an article, share it to your database, and you might just be surprised who is following you out there and who opts in, who follows you, who comments or contacts you to join a venture. So, there's no any questions or comments? Uh, we have two. Jason okay. has a question. Who? Jason Cisneros. Oh, Jason Cisneros. Excited, one of our keynote speakers from Note Camp 3.0 is gonna be on there. Yes. Ask, how do you manage to be so sexy? That's my question. Please answer clearly. <laughs> oh my God. Uh, yeah, I don't know if we'll answer that, big man. Uh, maybe it's because I have a little hair. <laughs> oh, wow, uh, good oh, stuff there. Perry uh, asks, I am seeing the results now after sending all of the emails. I have marketing emails. So that's great, Perry. Congratulations to you. Yay. Big, big applause. It's doing something, taking action. Mm -hmm. And maybe, Jason, that's why I'm so sexy, because I take a lot of action, baby. <laughs> <laughs> take a lot of action. And on that note, I think we'll wrap it up for Monday night, everybody. Have a great day. We'll see you Tuesday. Um, we probably won't have, actually we will have a, uh, no, we won't have a Monday note or a, uh, don't close the show on Thursday unless I do it live from the airport before I jump on a plane. We will do, I will do one Friday morning live in, in, uh, San Diego. So join us tonight, seven o'clock, get signed up, get your RSVP, your spot, and, uh, we'll see you guys all at the top everybody. Bye.